I have dedicated my professional career to the study and control of arthropods. Okay, now on to uh, the vaginal obstacle course. Um, the term cracks me up, but it's a, it's it's actually a pretty amazing thing if you think about it. Um, so one of the one of the things that you see, and mammals are a pretty bad example, even though mammals do exhibit some of this. Um, mammals are f fairly poor at it. Um, when you get into uh, like flatworms, uh, insects are a great example of it. Um, you get into some uh, just amazing amazing genital morphology where it you get to see what this obstacle course can really be and um so when you look at it this is like for, like i think it's morassids um i'll put a link up uh, morassid bugs are one of the true bugs hemipterans um as i understand um i couldn't find my flat i had a, a flatworm reference and i can't find it anywhere um i can't find it's not in the the books i have anyway i'll i'll dig it out if i find it later on i'll i'll showcase it specially but these morassid bugs true bugs um what we find is that if you take and you sort of map the vagina of these bugs in other words you know map it out based on complexity um and by complexity i mean first of all it's convoluted long and convoluted but it also has multiple branches that lead to dead ends so it's got um you know, it's branched. It's 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 a maze. It's a complex maze. But if you map out these morassids by species, these are called the plant bugs. Um, you find that primitive ones have the simplest vagina, although it's still complex. While the most more advanced ones have the most complex, the most loops, the most turns, the most blind alleys, the most branches. Okay. Um, and so when you look at this and you sort of lay it out, primitive to advanced, what you start to see is I talked about, okay, back back to the video, last video, um, hopefully you're watching these in order, um, is that if sperm motility um, or the ability of a sperm, you know, to find an egg, you know, I guess it's seeking seeker qualities, I don't know, it's bloodhound sniffer qualities, or whatever it is, its ability to find the egg... If that it indicates fitness in the male, good fitness, good genes, good potential father for your offspring, right? You Okay, so picture, here's the primitive condition. Reasonably complex vagina, okay? Males mate with her. Only those best sperm get through, the ones that can find the egg. But what happens in that population? Well, pretty soon, um, you could imagine especially as environmental as, as situations are changing um, pretty soon only the males that have sperm that can make to, to the egg are left right all of the inferior males that can't make it to the egg are gone so suddenly the contest is no longer you know it's like if you have a championship contest I don't know dart throwing you know and pretty much after a while everybody that left hits a bullseye or wherever they want to hit every time you know, you're left with only the best. So what? there's no more competition. Um, so then it's in the female's best interest. And I mean, not she's consciously deciding this. A favorable mutation that makes the vaginal canal more complex. Suddenly, now you've, you've tightened the, the, the competition a bit more. So now, once again, only the top males are going to make it through. But then pretty soon, same thing happens. This is, now we're getting into what we call an arms race. Males are evolving, better sperm, uh, better ability to find the egg. Females are countering with more complex vagina, more convoluted, more twists and turns, okay? Um, so, as you can imagine that, so this is an arms race. So this is why we see in these morassids increasingly complicated vaginal canals, um, Presumably, obviously, since there are babies of each of those species, males have adapted to just sort of match the challenge. But this is where it gets really... Because remember, I talk about females' cryptic choice, okay? this is That's the root of this. But don't forget, males aren't just out there randomly squirting into everything. Ran males 
aren't just, you know, it just because sperm is cheap, sperm can be as cheap as it wants, but if you're not successfully mating, you're not passing on your offspring, okay? So males are in this competition too, as I mentioned with the, you know, in that last example. So males are also uh, competing with females, you know, in this way. So suddenly, here's what we find in the in the most advanced, the most complex of the morassid bugs. Get ready, this is really really cool. We find they do what's called traumatic insemination. Traumatic insemination is the term. The male no longer uses the vagina to inseminate the eggs. He uses his penis and punctures through the body wall of the female and puts his sperm directly into nearby the ovary of the female. Bypasses the vagina altogether. She still has the complex vagina, but it's no longer used for mating in these advanced species. So this vagina got most... And that's the one with the most complex vagina. So it hit the point where selection favored the male that just cheated. The Kobayashi Maru, the Captain Kirk of the insect world, cheated on that game and just punctured the body wall, puts it right there. So we find these morassids, the advanced morassids use that traumatic insemination. Um, the, the complex vagina is still used in those species, but it's used, that's where the eggs come through. So the eggs are actually extruded through it. So they still have it. It's still there. It's just not used for mating anymore. Um, I think that's pretty amazing. And we find another group of, of, of insects, the, um, the mimicids. I might be thinking of that wrong. Mimicids, I believe that's correct. The bed bugs. You know, the nasty, despicable bed bugs that everybody, um, you know, don't let the bed bugs bite. Um, all of them use traumatic insemination and all of them have a complex vagina that's not used so that might look at as a terminal you know whatever all of the comp you know all of the species that had the we would assume in their ancestry this pattern of increasingly complex vagina leading up to the males making their own hole um, and the other species went extinct this was such a successful adaptation, this traumatic insemination that the males, I mean that that those that played the, the normal game went extinct um, and only those that traumatically inseminate but in bed bugs we find a trend between species that actually puncture, but they actually one of the, you know, between the segments where there's, there's a membrane, that's where they puncture through um, but we find that in an advanced to primitive bed bugs, we find that this penetration point actually is uh, how to put it? There's actually what's called a pseudo vagina now in that same spot in the advanced species. So rather than suffer this traumatic insemination, so to speak, in all of the species, the advanced ones have evolved another means of getting to the egg that functions as a vagina. Now the question would be: Is if in a million years, ten million years, if suddenly that pseudo vagina becomes you know, let's put a branch in it. Let's, let's make sure we only get the best sperm that makes it to this egg. Let's branch it. Well, let's branch this again. Let's, you know, and the game starts all over again. But then, I'm not saying that's, that's not a prediction of what's going to happen. I'm saying that that's the kind of thing in evolution. That's the way this thing, system kind of, it tends to operate. We get these arms races. Uh, maximize reproductive output. So I'm going to take a break here from uh, uh, the intersexual or sexual selection um, talk. I'll get back to it, but I want to. I want to. Uh, in my next video, I want to talk about the evolution of anisogamy, the evolution of sex itself, because that's a really important. That's a pretty pretty big question, and believe it or not, science has a pretty good handle on how that how it works. Um, it's going to be uh, well. Anyway, I'll, I'll we'll get to it. It'll be probably several parts again as well. So uh, take care, and thanks.